Hi, welcome to MCC Today. This is Katie Watson, your host. MCC Today is brought to you from the Muscatine Community College campus, where we take you behind the scenes and get you updated on the latest information on programs and services. If you've been following the show for a while, you are going to be very excited about what we have in store today. If you remember, I told you at the beginning of this series that we were going to go on site, do action shots, and have surprise guest hosts as part of this new format. And I am here to deliver. Today as my guest host is the infamous and elusive Chad Bishop. Hi, Chad. Hello, welcome Channel 9 folks. I'm happy to be here wearing a couple hats. And I'm also Absolutely. happy to be here because as you'll see, we literally put our lives at risk for, for the audience this, this episode. We say we, but I don't think he really means we. I think he means I put his life at risk. But it's going to be fun to see. And I think so that we have enough time to cover everything we have to do today, I think we should just roll film. What do you think? Yeah, well, give him a taste that we've got the uh, Aero Flight coming up here. Mm -hmm. And I'm here as the intramurals coach. I just kind of want to let people know why I'm here, because otherwise it might feel a little bit odd. But well, we're going to go into the go fact into that the Chad has been behind the scenes for I don't know how many years. But today, coming out, coming out from the behind shadows. the camera, yeah. he is right here in the studio because he has a very special announcement to make about some changes that are happening at MCC as, as we relate to wellness. And, and we all, I think, with the Blue Zone Initiative in Muscatine, um, I think it just makes sense that, that Muscatine Community College is really getting on the bandwagon and, and promoting wellness and health. As you can tell from looking at me, I'm right there. At any rate, first of all, we have some exciting footage that we have taken at Carver Aero, and we have a short interview with the flight instructor there. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the fact that we've had an aviation program here, and as, as we roll film, we're going to talk about what are some of the changes to that curriculum and that program, and how does Jonathan play into it, but I think we should probably just start with Jonathan's words to us. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm great. Uh, we're here today at the Muscatine Airport, which, give me the official title. It's Muscatine Municipal Airport. Muscatine Municipal Airport. Tell me what you do here. Um, I'm the flight instructor down here in Muscatine, and I'm also a flight instructor for Carver Aero in Davenport. Okay. Now, as a flight instructor, what, what does your day look like? What's your career? My career is to take people, uh, sometimes people have never been in a plane, to taking them through their training, ground training and flight training, to uh, taking them, making them being able to fly a plane. Um, everything involved with it, from navigation, systems, uh, operation of the aircraft itself. How long does that take? Give me, a, give me like a general, if I decided I wanted to have a private pilot's license and I came to you, what's... How, is that a year? Is that six months? Is, how long does it take to get that? If you were to fly once a week, I would say approximately 10 to 12 months. If you were to fly twice a week, approximately six months. And that would get me the private pilot? Private the, pilot license. Okay, and then what are the other classifications? There's also an instrument rating. There is a commercial license, certified flight instructor, multi-engine rating, and it just carries on from there. There's also a airline transport pilot license. Do we do all of that here in Muscatine? We do. I think this is the best kept secret. I don't know that everybody knows that you can do that here. So what, how much could I get done in Muscatine? Um, if a person wanted to pursue aviation in a career, you could do all your training right here in Muscatine and or Davenport. We are the same, basically we're the same company. Uh, this is just one of our... A branch. A branch of it, so basically, yeah. So does every community have an airport like this or are we unique in that we have one? Uh, we're unique, also as in we have a new facility. Uh, it's beautiful, by the way. I was here years and years ago, and uh, it's this is gorgeous compared it, to what it is. It is. They put a lot into this. Uh, the airport itself is really good for instrument training. There's less traffic here than other airports, but um, you know we have a ILS landing system. We have VOR uh, approach, so you can do your instrument rating here with less traffic. Anything you need to do, you can actually get done right here. Interesting. What what keeps people, what it draws them and what keeps them away? What are the pros and cons of aviation as a profession or a hobby, I guess? Um, as a hobby, I would say for some people, it may be perhaps the expense of it. 
It can be costly. Is it costly? Do you have to own a plane or can you, you just rent one? You don't have to own one? a plane. We rent planes here. Okay. Um, so a person can come here, they can rent a plane. Um, certain equipment you may need like headsets, uh, like I have here. Um, we provide those for students. And you sanitized mine. Which I was, did sanitize you know, That's the kind of service <laughs> that you get at the Muscatine Municipal Airport. You get your headset sanitized if you don't own your own. That's good stuff. Okay, so if I'm going to rent a plane, is that 50 bucks? Is it 100? Is it, is it by the mile? What, how do you? It's by the hour, which goes by tenth of an hour. So if you fly for. Oh, good for, gosh, now there's math. <laughs> if you fly for 0.8 of an hour, then you would only pay for 0.8 of an hour. If you fly for 1.1, you pay for 1.1. Hmm, okay. And I, now if I wanted to own a plane, where would I keep that plane? Do I keep it at my house? Do I, do I keep it here and pay rent? What? How does it work? There actually are hangars here at Muscatine Airport. Uh, they're owned by the city, and the city would need to be contacted, and you can actually rent a hangar from them. Do people do that? Like, do we have... People do that. There's people? probably about uh, 30, 35 planes here on the field. Really? Just in personal uh, tea hangars. Wow, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have suspected that. Now, as far as corporate, uh, I think we are unique in Muscatine have such a large industrial base and corporate headquarters here so do they own planes that they fly in and out of here do you uh, fly those there's a couple corporations i do fly for other companies out of davenport um, there are a couple corporations that have aircraft here and actually muscatine there's a lot of transient corporate aircraft that come in there's probably anywhere from 10 to 15 jets a week that come in here uh, for local companies so what are they doing? I'm flying into Muscatine. Am I headed to the Quad Cities for a meeting, or am I here for meetings? Is that they're in Muscatine for meetings? Okay. So this it does get quite a bit of traffic here, really. There is quite a bit of traffic considering the size of the community. Yep. So if I wanted to get in a plane, I'm from Ohio. I want to fly to Ohio and back. Is that cost effective to do that? Would a person, a novice like me, would I want to? get a license to do that or I would hire you to do that what's is it cost prohibitive to do that it depends how much you like flying if you like flying I would suggest to someone to get your license that's how I started um, just because I love to fly and so do you fly your family to Florida for the weekend and like do you do that we do short trips okay. and we just Chad wants to go get a bottle of wine in Napa Valley. That, I mean, you know, the Chad is looking at, get, at doing this someday, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to go on a whim, fly to California, and back for no good reason. So do, is that normal? Well, Chad's not normal, but is that normal <laughs> that somebody would have that dream? That is normal. A lot of people uh, that come to me that want to learn to fly, they have dreams what they want to do with the aviation. Um, when they go for their intro lesson, like you're about to go for, they often share with me, uh, you know, all these ideas that they have, what they want to do with their license. And I want to see them do that because I was in those shoes too. I still very am. Cool. That's very cool. So, you know, this is MCC TV. So as far as an MCC student, do you, do you teach some of our MCC students? Um, I've had a few MCC students enrolled. Some of the others are at Scott Community College. But Eastern Iowa Community Colleges have the aviation program. We supply the training for that. Very good. So would they come to you first? Would they come to the airport, say, I'm interested in doing that, and then, then we get contacted? I know I've had a father recently who sent me information. I sent him here yep. to make sure that it was even feasible with the cost. A lot of students think they're going to do it for MCC tuition, yep. and that's not going to happen. So the cost is probably the first thing you want to discuss with them yeah, the, to see how serious they are. Exactly. Uh, the cost of it, um, unfortunately, like I said, it can be a little bit expensive. Um, but the cost for the aviation training actually gets paid to us since we supply the training. The college tuition goes to the college. They're two separate things. Okay, that's, that's how that works. Because most of the time our programs are all the same price. This one is unique, and that's kind of what our mission is in this series of MCC TV is to talk about the unique programs, the lesser known programs, um, delivery styles that are different than your traditional classroom. This is clearly different than your traditional classroom because <laughs> yeah. you meet with your students here. 
in I, this room? I meet with students in this room. I can also teach in Davenport. Um, and we do both. Sometimes we hold a ground school class that could consist of 10 to 20 people. And I also do one-on-one -on -one instruction, which is a normal thing anyway with flight instruction. Everybody needs individual attention because they're all at different levels and understand things differently. Okay. Well, okay, if I'm sitting at home and I'm thinking, I really want to fly commercial jets, is it logical that I would come, this is my first step? This is your first step. So then what, what do you, how do you get to a commercial where I can fly people in big jets? It, it's a progression, I understand, but do you have to have so many hours? Do you have to have a certain test? Do you, how, you know, do I just walk up to Continental and say, or whoever, Delta, and say, I, I want to fly for you, and Jonathan taught me, so I'm good? Yeah, there are, there are stringent standards. There's qualifications you have to meet. So uh, different ratings, you need to hold a certain license, which would be an airline transport pilot license. You need to have a minimum of 1,200 hours. Um, but your first step is to come here or to call here and arrange an intro flight. Go for an intro flight and see if that's what, see if it's what you want to do. And that's what we're going to do today. Yep. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're about to get in the airplane. Let's do it. Now, Chad, if I remember correctly, that was the Musco plane coming in, correct? Yeah, that's right. Here we go. That's not the plane Chad and I are in, in case all of you are going, wow, she flew that plane? No, here comes mine. Here's yeah. my plane. This is it, the big popper. This reminded me from the start, the day the music died was unfortunately. Oh, nice. I just, I know, I went to a bad place early. This, yeah, this is, two Wait. things going on here, though. This is interesting to see that it there's is. some real deal flights happening in Moscow, Moscow Lighting. They must be doing all right. Yeah, they absolutely. They have a, a flight, a, a captain comes in, Bandeg I bet has one, Han Pai has a jet. Isn't that amazing? I was surprised at how big. Oh, there's Katie's plane. There you go. Now ours is nice. Yeah, in 1971. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. And it's great that, you know, it lasts that long. It's dependable that long. Why can't they make a car that does that? That's my well, question. It wasn't helping my uh, fear factor, if you will, to see that it had ashtrays and, and the uh, lining of the inside was all messed up. But you're right. We almost Planes started smoking forever. <laughs> because obviously you can. Well, yeah, it was a classic, but no, that plane was nice. Oh, it did. We, we we jumped. We jumped. We didn't see him pull it out. He actually pulled it out by hand. So that I I thought, now there you go. There's state of the art technology when the instructor has to pull the plane out of the shop by hand. Well, the first problem right now is that he's letting you drive. Exactly, and this is a program that anyone <laughs> can do at Carver. And anyone who's ever ridden in a car with me understands that this was the scariest thing Chad will ever have to do in his life. But if you go to Carver, you can pay a fee, which isn't very much. It's like $50, $70, something like that. And Carver will put you with Jonathan, and you can fly the plane, take off, land, maneuver in the air. And they do that so that before you start taking pilot's lessons and you end up spending a lot of money, you can do one trial run. So if you're scared witless on that trial run, then you really shouldn't go into their program. So I think that's a really cool thing. And that's what got us interested in doing this. Well, it got me interested. Chad, not so much. Now, now I mean, I didn't get to ask you because I had a lot on my mind. As, but. What were your thoughts and feelings when he was basically giving you what I thought was a little bit more control over the situation than what maybe was right. warranted considering you didn't have any flight experience? And None. I have heard about your driving. Uh, See, he hasn't. Scenarios. And I think that was probably key in all this. So you're now, driving he, right now. I am. I am doing. Flying, it's called. <laughs> well, at this point, we're driving because I think we're still on the ground. But I have to say that is a very cool feeling when you lift off the ground yeah. and, and in my brain there we go, there we go. Yeah. and in my brain i was going okay how does that work how is how is that happening that's just phenomenal o or oval wright brothers feeling going you on you know i'm from ohio so i go way back with the wright brothers but <laughs> um i probably would have done better in their plane than i do in this yeah, one it's like set. a kite except for there was a chance that the kite was going to kill me yeah and it's a little bit <laughs> it's a little bit odd because your your depth perception perception is off so you you're driving over and you're looking at, in your mind you don't really calculate we could crash and burn doing this 
I mean, it just, it's just surreal. You lift up and you're flying over town. It's just amazing to me that, that yeah. you can do that. And it didn't actually feel dangerous by any means. And I as know, he, that's as what I mentioned, it, it isn't, it's way more dangerous to drive a car than it is to fly that plane. I've but been in Egypt, that, I know that that's true. It's a leap true. of faith, though, to, to, to see the fact that you're flying over town. Okay, we'll, we'll have some shots, so all you farmers out there, don't turn, off, don't turn off your screens because we'll get some shots overhead. And when did we do this? A month, right before harvest started. So you should all be able to check out your crops, see where your dead spots are, point out your own houses, and we'll go over mine, so we'll do that a little bit, and we'll fly over the college as well. You can see it was a little overcast that day, which he was a little afraid that we wouldn't be able to do it because oh, there's all sorts of wind and other things that play into, like he called it the ceiling, I think. But we got up and we did it. There's, there we're coming out. The Looks like this little River. Liza, yep. Liza power so if you're plant just right tuning there. in, you're watching us at the MCC Today Show. We are flying over Muscatine as part of the Carver Aero Flight Instructing Program that you can do. And you can enjoy many things about this experience, but uh, one of them was that you were looking at the Muscatine from an aerial view, which is always interesting to me to kind of see what it looks like from the ground up. Yeah, we forget that the river flows the wrong direction here, so it's it's That's neat to go up and look at it from, from the sky. That red building was that Mahasha Packing Place, I believe. Yeah, that's where we're at. Is that uh, but the bypass the soccer fields are right there on the left. and uh, Probably Kent Stein. Kent Stein's right around there. Muscatine seems kind of big. There we go. What's that big circle? Is that West? I have no idea. Yeah, it is a big circle. There's West Middle School. If you folks at home are playing, you can enjoy trying to guess where we're at too because it's always interesting. Just a little more obvious, there's GPC back there. One of the things that we talked about during the interview was the program that students can do through MCC to get their pilot's license. And you know, we pride ourselves on bringing our viewers state-of-the-art technology as well as current information. Um, now, in order to do that program, you, you start at Carver. You go to Carver Aero, you sign up for the flight classes, and then once you've completed your training, you come back to MCC and we give you college credits, kind of like credit for prior learning. We give you college credit after the fact. Um, a lot of that being because it's hard to get through the curriculum in a traditional semester. Um, there could be weather problems, there could be, you know, the, the testing part might be difficult for you. You know, there's just all sorts of scenarios. So it was cumbersome to get it where you signed up for the credit, then did the flight training. So we, we flipped that around, and I think that's gonna be a lot better for students. You still work with Carver, you still work with Jonathan. Um, it's just, we're gonna give you credit for prior learning instead of credit in the front side. Now where are we at? Oh, there's, there's the bridge. bridge yeah. Okay, so we're flying over. Now watching this footage is giving me the same feeling I had while I was filming it which is kind of a nauseous feeling. Oh wait, feeling. my hands are in the air. Is that a good thing? <laughs> Look, Ma, <laughs> that, no could, hands. that could be why. Oh, I think I was excited because that's the college. Yeah, we're gonna do a little, he did a little drive by of MCC to see if we could see anybody. Now I have to tell you, he would say bank at 30 degrees. There's a pool it looks like. Yeah, Bank at swimming. 30 degrees or whatever, and I'd have to put this dial on 30. Well, it's a lot of turn to do that. So he'd go more, more, more. And then I'd like put it over there and I'd just hear Chad smack against the side <laughs> of the plane in the back. That's how I knew I was at 30. Yeah, bank Chad's head into the side. And then you know you're right where you're supposed to be. I filmed my house, there it is. Oh, hi Chad's house. I'm not home. But that's what, it's I don't just see interesting any to see junk what in your yard, Shamrock so Drive there looks like from Aerial View and there's Weed Park. That's an interesting little subdivision. Okay, so there's alien. Colorado yep. coming up. Weed Park Lagoon. Oh, the duck pond. Now I know where it yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's kind of fun to see it from this angle. Look how big the pool looks from there. It is big. It is From big. any angle, that's a big thing. There's MCC. Look at us. We got room to grow. Look at us. Isn't that awesome? Look at the apartments. If you live in the villas, you can wave at yourself. And what I noticed when we flew over was I could tell the pattern from when we do motorcycle and moped oh. training. I could see that laid out. I'm like, oh, look at that. That's how I knew it was us. Now, there was there's a big hole in the middle of MCC where most people get their cable or they get you know some sort of satellite feed and it was Jonathan's job to keep saying get away from that pole get away from the pole move away from the pole please 
You were going to hit a pole? Well, that big red flashing one where the buzzards oh live. Oh my god, I didn't yeah. know that was going on. Luckily, I couldn't hear your guys talking. There's MC, there's Muscatine at its finest angle, I think, from the, the river, Hotel Muscatine, oh, the Clark yeah, House. Oh yeah, there's the Clark House. That's going to be footage that's going to be interesting to look at it in a few years. Things will be changed, but we're in Illinois. We could archive this for it is know, archived. generations. It, they press come. record on this. This is not just live. This is us. There's your crops, if you know, Sam Berry in the bay. There's, there's your field. There's a channel called RFTV on my cable dial. It's something to do with Farmer's Channel. Maybe we should sell it. Well, I'm just thinking that the farmers might not, might be enjoying the crap out of this footage. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, and then there's the back of John. Oh, look at me. I'm, I don't know. I, sometimes I don't have my hands on the little Neither one of you really wheel. seems to be flying the plane at this point. It's just flying itself. We're trying to find my house. Well, so right now I'm like pointing saying, okay, there's Sam's house, there's Brian's house. They, I'm over here. This is interesting for you Illinois folks then. I, we I did lost spend a little a lot. focus over yeah. here. Well, I, I can tell because you're, you're pointing at the back of my head and I'm not quite sure why. There we go. <laughs> now it's looking better. It's really hard to look and drive because see all those dials? Every one of them had to be in a range depending on what you're doing. So, you know, you turn to look and all of a sudden you're veering to the left and losing altitude. Now whose farm is that? Oh, that's mine. There look at go. that corn. That is darn good looking corn right there. Oh my gosh, I have no idea what that would mean. There's the Katie house right there. Wow. There's the farm house right there. Jay's yeah, house. Hi, Jay. Yeah, cool. Huh? Look at the, I'm telling you what, Watson, that looks good, my friend. <laughs> How do you know it looks good? It looks like brown. Because uh, there's no mush. big dead spots. Oh, you know, okay. there's nothing that's discolored or and obviously this was fall because everything's golden, so the corn was almost ready to be harvested. Okay, we're leaving the Fast Watson plantation. A bit, yep. There's so, Monsanto, I believe. Another great partner for the college and the ag program, and we're just now, glad this they're footage, here. This experience didn't inspire me to become a pilot yet. I am planning on maybe getting my pilot license when I turn fifty down the road because this is interesting it'd be fun to be able to fly maybe fly what was i talking about if i wanted some some grapes or an apple from yeah Washington, you could go to napa and have a little fly to california and get have some a wine. little wine marshall mcdonald actually is a pilot here on campus so he takes our students our international students ag students me uncle claude we've all been flying with marshall um, and it is it's just really a neat hobby to have but it is very expensive that was one of the things that Jonathan was pointing out. To get your out. license you have to have all those hours like he talked about mm -hmm. and accumulate them. I don't know what the heck that is but that's probably con condensation on, from I the hope, temperature. Yeah, I don't think it's fire. It's now not. what this this shot here inspired me to do something. Now Water uh, ski. I'm planning on getting a kayak now that I've seen there's all these little tributaries and fingers of the Mississippi yeah, River. Cool. I think it's called Lake Odessa. I've been there but from a bird's eye view there's a whole world of uh, natural water trails, we'll call them. Trails that you mm -hmm. need a boat of some sort. Yeah, the river isn't just like one big channel. Look it's, at that. The big hole, the you know, totally. undiscovered fountain of youth there. <laughs> <laughs> when we can't Ponce find Chad, I'll take the plane back up and look for him and his kayak on one of those little me and my fingers son, of the river. Me and my son are going to inspire, are going to uh, discover new lands. Okay, here's an important part of any journey. The, the landing. <laughs> this, honestly, the whole thing, I was a little nervous. My palms were sweaty, you know, I'll have to say. Oh, it, it, was, it was unnerving. The landing part had me pretty well petrified. That's where a lot of the fatalities, if, that, yeah. if something's going to go wrong, it's in the landing. I mean, usually it's I not turbulence. I can't parallel park a car. Oh, and okay. here I am, and, ch and he's going, okay, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, slow it down. It looks do good so far. You're aimed in the right direction. You well, I couldn't find the runway, first of all. I oh, tried to go to the gosh. wrong one, and he's like, no, this one, this over here, over here. Look at my little crop spinning. You can see it right there. <laughs> here we go. Watch there. Jonathan bump when I hit. Oh, that was smooth. That's not bad. That was. I don't know who gets credit for how smooth that landing was. Uh, probably Jonathan. So but far. See how I can't see relax. over the little windshield? Yeah. That bothered me a little. That has to do, I thought about the reasonings behind that, and I think it's because you don't want like a bird or something flying at you. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it be yeah, a safety thing? You wouldn't want to have a, a full thing of glass between you. I and don't know, but it unnerved me a little bit because I had to sit <laughs> way up on like my you couldn't see toes. what you were doing no I couldn't see a thing <laughs> if I just sat back against that seat I couldn't see over the thing at all well, all I saw were clouds doing a low rider with it well we made it we did and and it was 
amazing and Jonathan let me just tell you Jonathan is an excellent instructor he, he talks you through it he doesn't panic he doesn't get riled up unlike others who ride in cars with me that start screeching like girls he didn't do that at all he was just really calm he's like you're doing fine let's do this so that I just that is just a neat program and I'm glad that we were able to bring that to your awareness as a community member that that you can do that and that there are private flight training options available right here so um, another neat thing about Muscatine that very few people really know and the airport was gorgeous yeah. it was like you were it was little obviously but it's like you're walking into this very fine hotel it was super easy to find the, the, the terminal that we needed you know you didn't have to look at the you are here you no didn't have to get a we knew escalator we knew Muscatine airport is very easy to navigate it is and it's beautiful <laughs> it the, is color, nice. the color the color is, is beautiful nice and i know that there's a committee that works on that and our community volunteers there's so. proof that we made it there we are. Oh, look! Look how graceful. No, just leave me. <laughs> just that's fine. I I'll get say out. Graceful, but I'll get out. It's like tattoo or the plane. It reminds me of Fantasy Island. Yeah. Here you oh, are. Oh, you just showed your you just showed your age, but you're right. Oh, that's on Nick. It's at the night. plane, boss. <laughs> look at me. Nobody's helping me down. I that's was just right. happy to be Chad, on the ground. Chad's just kissing the, the ground. The only reason right I'm now. filming that is just proof that, that we made it because <laughs> the idea of you flying me uh, was an now, interesting thought. Now, let me just say. I had to drag you by the nose holes because you said, oh, this, well, this isn't going to work. There's all these things that are going to go wrong. I lose control of the lighting. But that was cool, wasn't it? Yeah. See? He's not going to fire me this season. Yeah, well, and it was an idea that we wanted to show that happens at MCC. Unusual programs. Yeah. Things that you don't know happen here. People who are here, um, maybe if you're transferring to a four-year degree, the reason why you would want to bring that credit in, because you don't need us to get your private pilot pilots or your instrument rating or any of those things or even to fly commercial you don't need us but what we provide are the gen ed courses that make that a transferable degree so if you're looking at Dubuque or you're looking at I think there's a program in North Dakota we've transferred a student to so if you're looking for that four-year degree then you do need us to connect the dots so and we're glad to be here to do that you just come in bring your stuff talk to the Dean and it's all good Essentially, if you have something that you want to learn how to do, this is my take on MCC, there's probably some way that we'll teach you how to do it. Like exactly. There's, there's not many things that we can't, I mean, challenge it. At least I want to learn how to operate a semi-truck. Yes, That's happening right now. Absolutely. I mean, anything there's you can think of, there's them. some way that you could probably figure out to teach them. And if you want to play that game, play that game with Paul Martin because he, he's the ag instructor here. He can take that and turn that into an ag career. No matter what you say you want to do in the world, he'll say, hmm, we do that in ag. This is what you need to take. So, you know, that's a consummate salesman, I think, that can do that, can turn everything to his advantage. Well, Chad, we have another, I think, late breaking do -do 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 announcement from MCC. Um, Erin Bonesack, who was an academic advisor and she was also intramurals director, um, has taken a job at Palmer and she is now the assistant registrar at Palmer. So of course we wish Erin well, but you won't see her as co-host anymore. And if you're an MCC family member, students and faculty and staff, uh, we had a vacancy to fill for intramurals director. And who did we look to but our Chad? So Chad, tell me, tell me what's going on in intramurals because uh, obviously it's going to be very visual you control the channel nine so i think the entire community is oh, going to yeah. know what we're doing we're in, inter <laughs> in intramurals it's going to be good time way too much now here's the mcc intramurals first thing aaron told me is i have to learn how to tweet and mcc at mcc intramurals if you're a student especially add me to your follow me or whatever it is and i'll tweet you all sorts of stuff of of interest you know uh, about our Not different just, programs i hate it when i am friends with somebody or I'm a tweeter with somebody and they constantly like the St. Louis Cardinals every time somebody breathes in that baseball organization they tweet it don't do that Chad that's irritating I'm super lazy make it make it good stuff I'm super lazy about tweeting and actually the fact that I have to say the word tweet it's wrong was actually not part of what I understood the, the it's not very intramurals coach but anyway I'm the MCC intramurals sports coach now we're going in different directions besides sports, but that's kind of why I'm dressed like this. This is my uh, what's a, a uniform because yeah. I, I want to make intramurals at MCC sports. We have a baseball and softball team, very very great competitive, program, absolutely. But we don't have everything for people that want to be 
physically active and engaged socially for non-athletes uh, in that program. So we've got, MC, as you can see by that slide, uh, we've got some things coming up. Go back to the slide for a second. We got boot camp, ski trip coming up, a dodgeball league. It's not a league, but we're going to throw the dodgeball at people. Great. We've got uh, now, Chen, before indoor you... football. I'm, I've got a proposition for a team a volleyball team who's going to play at the Moscone Parks and Rec League. Awesome, that's cool. MCC I've thought, about, I've thought we, that for a long time. MCC will not put together a bad volleyball team for obvious reasons. I've got a great uh, pool Core, of yeah. potential volleyball and players. And we have a lot of students who are here who choose not to be in athletics anymore. They decide to go with their academics versus playing competitive baseball or softball. But that's a great outlet for those people because they're physically fit coming to us they're used to being at practice every day or night for their sports in high school. And this gives them something to do that releases some energy, keeps them fit. They don't get the freshman 15, you know, those kinds of things that we've, I won't say we've ignored it before, but it has not been an intentional focus before, like you're focusing it. Yeah, I mean, just let's try, kind of try to make it a little bit more physically active. So the social part is important, but things that involve movement and athletics are obvious one of the options, but it won't necessarily be just for athletes. Dodgeball, I mean anybody. Well, can that's what I'm wondering, Chad. Let me just tell you how physically fit I am. I. We'll talk about that in just a minute, guys. Go ahead and go back to Katie's story. See, that's story. what happens when Chad is in the house. Um, I go bowling with my the children up. the other day. I slip on pop at the bowling alley and fall down, bruise my tailbone, right in front of about 15 MCC students. Do you have activity at my level, Chad, the person who can't even go into the bowling alley without coming out with an injury? Well, what do yes, you think? I do. <laughs> Could you Is there hope the for me, Chad? Could you guys put the graphic on the screen? Because I want to make sure people know about this tweeting thing if you're a student. You know what? You are somebody who came up in, convers came up in conversation oh, with Shelly. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, the, uh, the lower CG, guys. Um, we were talking about like making sure that it was uh, opportunities for people that aren't quite as athletic, including Katie Watson, who including wants the to be child. active and, and involved, and we'll uh, talk about that in just a moment. Uh, put up the graphic that has my name on it, and has the MCC, it's the CG. We don't understand the technical terms. Hey, we should point out, though, that because there. Chad's in front of the camera, we have some of the students running the camera today. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's they're, all good. they're real intent on sharing this, but I'm trying to hold that back a little bit, so give me a break, you're stressing me out. No, I'm just kidding. The boot camp body shaping, we'll, we'll move to. What I'm actually asking for is just to remind people, the, there you go, and then the Twitter address. Because MCC Intramural Sports is something I don't know if the community realized that we are going to kind of be focusing on some sport athletic opportunities. So if you're a student or a parent or thinking about coming to MCC, mm -hmm but we're wanting to make sure that the student can be active or, or you are a MHS volleyball player and maybe we're thinking, hey, maybe I'm not gonna go to MCC because I wanna continue that, just not necessarily at the collegiate level, mm -hmm. but I wanna continue to be active. We're hopefully gonna have programs for people who wanna be active like sports, um, uh, volleyball, and flag football, I believe I can pull off and I've got an idea for a basketball team as well. How cool, so how if I'm a student and I'm going, oh, finally, I've been wanting this information. I just contact you, Chad, or is there some other funnel? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, the C Bishop at EICC.edu that was on the screen, or 288-6070, those graphics will come up every once in a while. Just for general information, though, you're, you're going to get it right now, mm -hmm. as far as that goes. And But people like Katie Watson, who fall at the Bullet Alley, just minding their own business, well, actually, yeah. that's one of our big our big sporting events is bowling night. So Great. if you can get there maybe, without falling. Maybe if I get some training, I'll be able to actually get through two frames without falling on my posterior. So we're going to have bowling. And just yesterday, or whenever you watch this, but we just had who wants to win stuff. Yeah, it was cool. And it worked well. And basically, it was funny. Building yeah. memories to last a lifetime, I believe I heard you say. It was memorable. <laughs> and people wanted a lot of stuff. I have money. I have a budget. And we buy it's stuff money. and we give it to students with little questions asked just because just they showed to up. Have fun. Yep, just <laughs> yeah, just to have, to have fun. fun, basically. T shirts and there's a little there's different movie nights and things that might happen, but I'm gonna keep it mostly physical physically active. So next time I bust out the Xbox, it'll probably be a minute to win it. 
and so oh, there will be a little fun. physical component. We also have Wipeout coming and Dance, 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 maybe. Aw, oh, Barry's gone. Doggone it. But she loved Dance, Dance, Dance. Xbox and the Wii are actually physical, act, physically active sports, in my opinion, and they're kind of fun well, to put out the Well, that's kind of the center. thing. I, and Chad and I have talked before because I am the yin to his yang as far as activity level. Um, it needs to be fun, and then, oh, by the way, did you realize you just exercise for 30 minutes. So maybe it's dancing for some people. I know Dave Carson is big into all sorts of competitive dancing. Um, and yeah, look at him, he's skinny as a rail. Um, those are great physical activities, yep. but yet they're still fun. So you don't, if you're not the kind of person who wants to sit at the gym and do this because it bores you out of your mind, dancing is a great activity or some of these other things that Chad's mentioning that, you know, you don't really have to be good necessarily it's just the fact that you're moving and yeah. getting some stress relief and it does make you think clearer so, so let's I, take an example good. of that now having fun while getting physically fit now the big pitch i mean a lot of things in the works like the dodgeball and the volleyball league and uh whatnot but the big pitch is that graphic that we've been seeing a few times already go ahead and bring it up now we're going to be talking <laughs> about <laughs> The long group fitness is kind of a working entrepreneurial idea I've had. The long group Entrepreneurship wellness. because we're big into that at MCC. I'm big that's in, awesome. Yeah, do it all. So that's kind of the umbrella of this MCC and Murals idea called for this first thing I'm going to launch in January is boot camp. Everybody's heard of boot camps. The Those military. are scary, Chad. I'm going to do one that's scary but fun. I'm going to scare you into you, the, the weight, the extra fat is going to just like be afraid to be on your body after it goes to boot camp wow. body shaping. It is going to leave. Where are we? Where are we holding boot camp? Now body I'm gonna get that in a second, but do notice that I am a certified ACE American uh, American Council on Exercise um, fitness professional. I got my certification, so I do know what I'm talking I've about. I've never heard of that, Chad. I ACE. know you find that hard to believe. Well, you've never really walked I've heard the of ASE without, <laughs> without tripping either. So ASE certification it. makes you able to fix my car, so this makes you able to fix. My it's, self? It's a big, it's a big certification. Yeah, it's health certification. Okay. It took me quite a while to get that. Where do you get that? Um, that's available through basically it's a national organization. So there's lots of different testing areas you have to go oh, to, and then it's okay. online as far as some of your study materials go. Okay. Whoa, so he's credentialed. Here's what too. we're doing now. Where is this happening at? Because I want it to be fun for people like you. It's happening at the Fitness Funhouse. <gasps> you know where that is, don't you? The MCC Fitness Funhouse. No, House? I don't. Tell well, me Well, can where? you tell by the picture? Those, no. are, those are artist re it's renditions. It's at the circus? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's one little flaw with my plan. MCC doesn't currently, it will someday, have a rec center. And that we need makes, a rec center. It, we, we do, really and that do. makes my job, my part-time job as a sports coach, a little challenging. It makes it, it challenging for Scott and, and uh, the baseball coach, Dave Barb, I believe is his name, because mm -hmm. we don't actually have an on-campus facility, and so we go out in the community. But mm -hmm. I think I can pull off an MCC Fitness Funhouse at the student center. Oh, well that's so true. That's I've already okay. got it all set up. We've got the music. I'm going to be playing some music. Now here's here's actual that's, footage. That's Katie right there. This is there. before. Where did you get that picture of me, Chad? This is not a before. This is just the after. Girls or guys, <sighs> I mean, quite frankly, girls or guys, pecs. if you want to look like this I don't and you are an MCC is. student, said that. This, <laughs> this is the program that Fitness Funhouse can turn your body into that. Guaranteed. Or your money back. And the reason I'm so confident to give you a full money it's back free. guarantee is it's free for students. <laughs> if you're not a student, you're out of luck right now. But don't worry, Belong Group Wellness will someday emerge from the shadows of MCC and be offered to the community. But right now we're talking about MCC but students. But what a, what a perfect demographic you have right here to, to launch your idea. That's Startup. perfect. Yeah, I'm always That's thinking. That's what the college is all about. I'm always thinking Making about Making people's that. dreams reality. If your dream is to look like that lady, which was you. It was me. <laughs> In my head, that's what I that's what I look like. Now, cardio, you know, cardiovascular training makes you look good in your clothes. Weightlifting and strength training makes you look good without your clothes, and so that's why it's a little that's bit tricky to notice thought. that that was you a little bit more exposed. True. Because your 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 muscle your uh, muscles are hidden. That's true. See, I I hide it under all these clothes. That's true. I'm I'm with you, Chad. So, do you have a website or something that I can look at to say? Oh, this starts in January, this starts tomorrow, this is over here, this starts at 7 o'clock. Do you have this compiled someplace, or did I just plant the seed of a fabulous idea? I have a TV show appearance now. 
<laughs> is one way that I'm letting people know about it. And then also that Twitter uh, would be a way that you can kind of keep on top of it. And I, we have a, a Porcelain Press, a monthly publication. Get to this school and enroll in this school and you will know when this is happening. If Are you using our Facebook page or not? If, yeah, they, if they're friends social with Social media, on? yep. Okay. So if you go to school here, you'll know about it to answer your question. And if you don't go okay. to school here, then I, I don't really that concerned about it at the moment because, because you're not you are the eligible. MCC intramural director that you have and your this, own focus in this particular light uh, website though would be something of interest potentially and we can work on that but essentially New Year's resolution it's January you're a student you live on the dorms it'd be probably a bunch of people it's gonna get cold it's not cold yet but it's gonna walk get over cold. from the dorms come into the student fitness fun house and do boot camp body shaping now I'm I've done boot camps at the Y and they're excellent. I've done lots of group training and I do my own training. I'm putting together a fun, it's hard to say that with a straight face. But Looking it, at me especially, huh? It's going to be a rewarding experience to go to the boot camp at MCC because we're going to combine calisthenics, we're going to combine plyometrics. Okay, those are the fancy terms for doing lots of different um, intervals and circuit training. Just kind of ways that you're exercising but you're not consciously thinking about it because I'm going awesome. to engage uh, music and then other students are going to make this fun because guess what loves company? Misery. Misery. If you want to come laugh, laugh at me falling down. See you feel better about yourself when you spend time with me. I hope someday that you can join us in our faculty version of MCC boot camp because it's eventually MCC's biggest loser might become a reality. Oh nice. Now that I've got student center and we all, you don't have much weight to shed, but maybe we can pump you up a little bit like the girl in that shot. Get a little muscle tone. Now, boot camp body shaping at MCC Intramurals if you're a student and want to tweet or a parent, I don't care. 288-6070 is my phone number, Bishop at eicc.edu. You don't really have to register or sign up. Um, just show up? Just show up. And because I don't know the exact time or the exact date right now, I'm thinking it's Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We'll find out. Okay. But what a great opportunity to uh, enjoy. That's just one of many intramurals in the works. Boot camp body shaping, free to students under the as part of Belong Group Fitness, which is kind of an idea of how I think I can help MCC become more physically active. We spend a lot of time the of on the mental zone. side of the educational side well, of it. Let's teach talk people to me. about physical health. Talk to me. You mentioned that the social aspect is important. Yes. Do you have information that what does that do for me? What, what does, if I can exercise in my basement by myself, why is it different if I come here and exercise with peers or people who aren't in my classes or know other people? What, what psychologically happens when you're in a group of other people? Yeah, that's, it, basically there's three things that uh, encompass being well, not being depressed, for example. There's a physical side of it, a mental, and a social. Those are the three big areas. And so if you're working out by yourself in the basement, um, that's great, but you're missing that social component. Mm -hmm. And when people need other people, I found it out the hard way, you know, when, when you're alone and isolated, you might notice you feel a little bit down. Mm -hmm. Getting out amongst people, whether it's church or this boot camp or going to classes, and it opens up a whole new feeling of uh, connection and happiness. Mm -hmm. And it's instinctual. We are, as humans, evolutionarily, you know, speaking as part of our evolution, geared to be around other humans. It's just part of our nature. And depression is a symptom of isolating yourself. So, man, I mean, anything you do that gets you Get your adrenaline up and be with other just people. Just connecting, and yeah. We've always, you're right. We've always worked on the mental side. That's, that's, our, that's what we college. do. We're a college. Yeah. So that's what we do. But you you're right. You sit and learn. So the way I'm looking at it is we've got about 98% of our programming right now is mental education. Good, because like I said, mental is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can get a little bit more on the physical side because... Physical activity, you're going to like this, it helps prevent um, plaque and uh, abnorm abnormalities in your brain. So For exercising makes you smarter. degeneration of your smarter. capacities. Yeah. So they all tie together. Cool. So if you combine learning with exercise and socializing, ding, 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 we have a winner. It's yeah. called whoever, it's called you. A person you know? who's more well, who's yeah. mentally and physically well and happier, we hope. Excellent. So all these, all these things coming that together. That makes sense when you say it. And now, if, so if you exercise with, at the, do MCC intramurals and exercise at the boot camp, for example, how does that affect your grades? It, hugely, because, well, you mentioned that some of the people at the student housing can get a little rambunctious if, I don't, if you don't have things to do. But 
you'll feel better, you'll be less sick, you'll be able to go up to classes more, your brain will be clear, you'll be connected, you mm -hmm. won't have to suffer from mental issues like uh, kind of like the, the winter blues and all that sort of thing. You'll feel better, your self-esteem will be increased because you'll literally look better if that's something that's important to you. And your overall health will improve, which obviously translate then tra translates to your academic success as well. All, all tied all together. All part of our really still focused on our initiative of student success, yeah. student completion. That ultimately everything, yeah, it's what, that's why intramurals exist, that's why drama department exists, all these extracurriculars that are part of MCC right. all work together to create much more than just what you're learning in the class. It's the big picture of who you become as a person after you go to MCC for two years. Well, I think that's a great focus and that may actually be a great place to, to end this segment. Um, so people interested, I think you wonder, oh, all those people have all that ambition or all that willpower, and I don't have that. that you show up. That, that's all you have to do, really. Oh, yeah. Just show up. Just walk through the door I'll is all you fun. have to do, and yep. the willpower will come because of that one act, just showing up. So that's all you really have to think about. Don't think about the big picture, the long goal, whatever. Just think about, I'm going to show up to that activity this time and go from there. And if you're thinking about going back to school, maybe this pushes you over the edge. Maybe it's just the whole idea that there are some new opportunities physically, like that MCC mm -hmm. is embracing the concept of wellness, of, of offering programming to get somebody to go back to school. You don't have to be 18 or 19. I'm talking about 27-year-olds, 57-year-olds, everybody. Right. We, At we some point, diverse. there's a culture to coming here. You, you will change well, your life. You you're know? taking away a lot of barriers. People will say, oh, I can't go work out because I can't afford a membership. Yep. Or it's too cold outside. Or, you know, I, I don't look like a 18 year old softball player or what. But you're really eliminating the boring factor, the There's cost not be factor. Many and yeah. guess what? I'm even willing to do the push ups and sit ups for the people at first. I will. There's no excuse. That's I will good do times your right workout there. for you. If you just show up, <laughs> I will sub in for you that first time. That's, learning technique, learning. There's no excuse. No, like, name no. one excuse. I just did. I just named all of my excuses. The finances, you, I don't have time to do it. I don't, Yeah. you know. There's, I, they're all easy. Just and you have and so go. many activities that it, you're fitting yeah, them in. All, one network. was at lunch, for goodness sakes. So, lunch, yep. you know, it was just a few minutes. He does, you do a walk around the park, which is, again, it's, it's such a short term and it's at different times so that, you know, even if you can just hit this one and hit this one and hit this one, while you've already arranged for childcare while you're in classes, it really is kind of a nice Something for outlet. everybody. And this, uh, this boot camp, I'm just pushing a little bit on this episode because it's time for January and I want it to work, but I'm not 100% sure how well it's gonna work in some ways and other ways. But having said that, the boot camp in January is gonna be great, but having said that, yeah, it's something for everybody. So that's the skiing trip, bowling. Um, we played Xbox, and we also were. Uh, I'm going to have a concert, probably in the studio or at the student center with a, a band called Exit Emergencies. Already signed up. Who've oh, already been cool. here? Oh, cool. Yeah, they've been here. They were. They entertained so for our picnic. Fun things. And if you're a student and want to get involved, you can actually be on the committee. Well, and help. think about that. Those guys. I've I've never seen boys jump so much in my life as when Exit Emergency were doing the the program for the. Uh, picnic earlier tailgate they jump the entire time they're playing you talk about a cardio workout they don't just stand there and play guitar or sing they are physically active while they're doing their performance it was it was funny yeah, that'll be i fun. thought thomas was gonna have a heart attack but he didn't well so, good that's it man mcc awesome. so i'm gonna give it a shot and see if i can uh uh, offer my perspective and see if I can help well, we'll, things out. We'll be here. interested in some follow-up when we come back for our next series of programming and see how MCC is doing as far as weight loss or or just feeling better or showing up to the activities. Those, oh, yeah. I mean, those are all of the things that we use to monitor whether a program is successful or not. So <laughs> we're excited about that. Well, thank you for joining us for MCC Today. We had a diverse show, but let me tell you, it was a bang-up season cliffhanger, wasn't it? So tune in next season when you find out how physically fit MCC is today.